everyone, we're back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about a difference in sexual development called persistent Mullerian duct. And that is exactly the way it sounds. Um, you're going to have somebody who is genotypically male, so usually XY, and they are going to have a paramesonephric duct or a Mullerian duct that is going to persist throughout development. So if you remember, the paramesonephric duct is typically going to degenerate when you have a genotypic male, but in this case, it is not going to. And we're going to walk through how exactly this happens. So, persistent Mullerian duct results from either a mutation in the Sertoli cells or in MIF. And it doesn't matter which one of these has the mutation, um, because if the Sertoli cells are mutated, that means that they cannot produce functional MIF, or if they have Sertoli cells that work properly, but the MIF that is produced is non-functional, you get the same result, and that is essentially a lack of MIF function on the paramesonephric duct. So if we look here at our picture, I've crossed off the Sertoli cells and MIF to show where this difference is going to be happening, and then we're going to walk through the path pathway just like we did in previous videos and see where we end up. So. In this case, we're going to have somebody who is X, Y. And so with this X, Y, we have our indifferent gonad, which is going to enter the SRY pathway. So we do have a functioning SRY. So we are going to produce TDF, and we are going to make a testis. So then let's follow the Leydig cell pathway for a minute. So we have our Leydig cells. Those are functional, those are going to produce testosterone. Testosterone is going to stimulate the maintenance of the mesonephric duct. And so we are going to have internal male genitalia. And then testosterone, if we remember again, is also going to be converted by 5-alpha reductase because this is still functional. It's going to be converted to DHT, which is still functional in this case. And so we are going to have external male genitalia as well. But then here's the interesting part. So we go back up to our Sertoli cells. And normally we would produce these Sertoli cells and MIF, which would cause inhibition of the paramesonephric duct and stop the potential of having internal female genitalia. However, we don't have working Sertoli cells, or we don't have working MIF, so we cannot inhibit this paramesonephric duct. So I'm just going to add here, um, because if you remember, the cause of being able to maintain that paramesonephric duct, what is needed to have uh, functional internal female genitalia, is the absence of of MIF. And what do we have here? We have the absence of MIF essentially. So we are going to stimulate this instead of inhibiting it. So our paramesonephric duct is still going to persist and we are also going to have internal female genitalia. Um, but we don't we do have SRY, so this pathway is not going to happen. So we aren't going to have ovaries. We're not going to produce enough estradiol to produce external female genitalia. But look at this combination. So we have our genotype is XY. Our external genitalia is male. So we are going to have a penis, a scrotum, and a prostate. But for internal, hold on a sec. We have both. We have male and female internal genitalia. So something that you would see with persistent Mullerian duct is that you are going to have a functioning testis. You're going to have mostly typical male presentation, but if you were to get an ultrasound uh, or an MRI or a CT on this person, you're going to see a uterus. You're probably also going to see some fallopian tubes. 
and uh, you're going to see the upper, upper part of the vagina. You're not going to see the lower part. So if you were to look externally, you're not going to see uh, the external vagina. You're not going to see a clitoris or labia. But this person has both internal male and internal female genitalia, even though externally they're going to most likely appear as a typical male. And so this is a pretty cool situation, and I think this is especially one that kind of debunks any sense of uh, sex being binary, because this person has a male genotype, male external phenotype, but both male and female internal phenotype. And we're not going to go into the whole hormones about this because we also know that hormone influence is secondary sex characteristics, and that's a whole other discussion. I'll get into that when we talk about the adrenal gland and the HPA axis. Uh, but I think that you get the idea. Um, if you have any questions or if you want to debate me in the comments, please do. And uh, I will do my best to answer any questions that you may have, and I will see you all in the next one.